Hey, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to continue with the knowledge check on AZ-304. Let's look at question number 15. You have been asked to recommend a solution to developers which grants them the ability to provision virtual machines. The requirements are scoped to the following. Allow creation of VMs for in specific regions. Allow specific sizes for the VMs. What do you recommend? The correct answer is Azure policy. Azure policy has the ability to limit regions and VM size families. Question number 16. You are advising a company that has an Azure subscription with several resource groups, including a group called Tailwind Resource Group 1 or RG1. An administrator named Tailwind Admin 1 has been assigned to the owner role for the subscription. And you are asked to prevent Tailwind Admin 1 from modifying resources in the resource group 1. However, you need to provide a solution that allows Admin 1 to manage the resources in another resource groups. What do you recommend? The correct answer is an Azure Blueprint. An Azure Blueprint allows architects to create artifacts and definitions that can include deny permissions in the deployments. This is something that ARM templates also cannot solve alone. Azure policies can be part of a blueprint but will not on their own provide any deny permissions asked for in this term. Let's look at question number 17. You advise a company that plans to deploy multiple Azure App Service instances that will use Azure SQL databases. The instances will be deployed contemporaneously with Azure SQL databases. The company has requirements to deploy App Service instances to specific regions. Also, the resources for App Service instances must be in the same region. You need to recommend a solution that meets the requirements. You recommend using an Azure policy initiative that enforces location. Does your recommendation meet the requirements? The correct answer is yes. An Azure initiative is a collection of Azure policy definitions that are grouped together towards a specific goal or purpose in mind. Azure initiatives simplify management of your policies by grouping a set of policies together as one single item. Let's look at question number 18. You are asked to provide a recommendation for a governance solution for an auto part wholesaler. They ask that all the Azure resources are identifiable based on the following. The location of the warehouse, cost center to be tracked by accounting, the catalog of parts and the part number. You need to make sure that they can use the operational information when they generate the report, what do you recommend? The correct answer is Azure policy that enforces tagging rules. Tags are a crucial part for organizing Azure resources into a taxonomy. An Azure policy for tagging items helps to identify business requirements. Question number 19. You are asked to recommend a data storage solution to fit the following requirements. The requirements are Applications must be able to have access to data using a REST connection. The storage solution must hold cost to a minimum. The solution will host 30 independent tables for changing sizes and varied usage patterns and automatic replication of the data to a second Azure region. What do you recommend? Correct answer is use of tables with an Azure storage account using geo-redundant storage or GRS. Tables in GRS are automatically replicated with the paired region. REST access works well with tables and is the most economical method to store the data for this scenario. Question number 20. You are asked to recommend a solution for migrating an application data to Azure. The scenario is as follows. An existing application instance that consume data from multiple databases. The application code references database tables using a combination of server, database, and table name. And you need to migrate the application data to Azure. 
what service do you recommend? The correct answer is Azure SQL Managed Instance. SQL Managed Instance is correct because it is fully managed solution and similar to the on-premises SQL Server product. Your customer can continue running as an instance with the features that are incompatible with the Azure SQL database single database model. Question number 21. You are designing a solution for an organization with the following requirements. They are using application insights. They intend on using continuous export. Application insights data needs to be stored for four years. Which service do you recommend? The correct answer is Azure Storage. The raw Azure application insights data points are kept up to 730 days. If you need to keep data longer than 730 days, you can use continuous export to copy it to the storage account during data ingestion. Question number 22. You are asked to design a message application which can be run on Linux VM. The app runs on Azure storage queues and you are asked to recommend a solution for the app to interact with storage queues. The requirement are upload messages every 15 minutes to be scheduled using a cron job and can create and delete messages every three minutes. What do you recommend to developers to work with the queue? The correct answer is .NET Core. .NET Core is an open source general purpose development platform. You can create .NET Core apps for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, or x86, x64, ARM32, ARM64 processors using multiple programming languages. Let us look into question number 23. You are recommending a solution for an auto parts wholesaler who is in the process of migrating to a new warehouse management system. The warehouse managers must keep file-based database backups for five years to meet OEM agreement standards. Given past experiences, using backups is not often necessary. Where would you advise the wholesaler to store their backups? The correct answer is Azure Blob Storage using the archive tier. The archive access tier makes it easy to copy a file into a blob container and reduces cost due to it being in the archive tier. Question number 24. The same auto parts wholesaler has set up an Azure storage account that contains two 4 GB data files. These files are called parts list 1 and parts list 2. The data files have been set to use the archive access tier. And you are asked to make sure that the part list 2 data file is immediately accessible when a retrieval request has begun. You recommend that the part list 2 data file to be set to access tier hot so that access is without any delay. Does this recommendation fulfill the requirements? The correct answer is yes. The data file is set to access tier hot. Changing the access tier from blob from archive to hot allows for immediate access for retrieval. One more follow up question. Let's look at question number 25. The same auto parts wholesaler has set up an Azure storage account that contains 2 GB data files named OEM list 1 and list 2. The data files has been set to use the archive access tier. And you are asked to make sure that the list one data file is immediately accessible when a retrieval request has begun. You recommend adding a new file share to the storage account. Does this recommendation fulfill the requirement? The correct answer is no. A new file share to the Azure storage account has no effect to whether the OEM list one data file will be immediately accessible once a retrieval request has begun. Question number 26. You are asked to make a recommendation for storing data in blob storage for an auto parts distributor. The data will be stored in a cool access tier or an archive access tier depending on the access pattern of the data. You are given the following data categories and their frequency of access. Part distribution barcodes deleted after 3 years, return location deleted after 220 days, and refund transaction number deleted after 14 days. You recommend using the archive access tier 
to store the files listed above. Which of the following below supports the recommendation? The correct answer is storage cost will be based on a minimum of 30 days. Data in the archive tier can take several hours to retrieve and data must remain in the archive tier for at least 180 days or be subjected to an early deletion charge. That concludes part 2 of the knowledge check. In the next episode, we are going to continue with part 3. I will see you on the next one. Until then, take care.